Section two is here, folks. It's about advanced networking and storage. This section has five lessons, each with their own video. We begin with virtual networking. In this lesson, I cover a number of fundamental virtual networking components available in Hyper-V. The virtual NIC is an important topic, so I begin with that. I then walk you through the classic network isolation technique available in the awesome Hyper-V V-Switch, and that is the VLAN and PVLAN isolation. VMQ and RSS are key technologies needed to overcome the problem created with faster networking. You'll see what that problem is soon. I finish this lesson with an intro to Hyper-V Network Virtualization, or HNV. Microsoft and the entire hypervisor market for that matter began supporting newer hardware capabilities in the VM's hardware. Capabilities such as EFI and Secure Boot, for instance. They also began removing legacy hardware capabilities such as BIOS, serial ports, COM ports, diskette or floppy drives out of that virtual hardware. Why? Well, because you can't buy physical floppy drives anymore. At least I hope you can't. Microsoft calls this modern version of hardware Gen 2 VM hardware. Windows Server 2019 still provides support for Gen 1 hardware in case you have a requirement to have a VM running with this legacy hardware. Gen 1 also happens to be how all VMs run in Azure as of this writing. Some advanced capabilities are only supported with Gen 2 VMs. We discuss one of these in the next topics, for instance. Keep in mind guest OS VM support is needed for Gen 2 VMs. Think modern OS versions like Windows 2012 R2 or Windows 10 or modern versions of Linux. You won't be able to install a 2008 R2 VM as a Gen 2 VM, for instance. These will need to be Gen 1 VMs. The Virtual NIC. The VNIC is the virtual network adapter. Every guest VM will need a VNIC to be able to communicate with other VMs. Windows Server 2019 supports up to 32 guest VNICs, so even the most demanding network routing application can be hosted as a VM on Hyper-V. The VNIC is where you configure advanced network features like DHCP Guard, as we saw in the previous section. One change introduced in Windows Server 2016 is the ability to add a NIC while a VM is running. This is only available for Gen 2 VMs, but at least you don't have to shut down the OS to add a VNIC. You will notice that every VNIC is configured at 10 gigabit per second. This is regardless of what the underlying hardware of the physical NIC may be. This is simply the synthetic NIC driver Microsoft ships with Hyper-V. Next, VLANs. VLANs have been around for a long time and as an experienced Windows admin, you likely have had to configure NICs with VLANs before. VLANs are supported in the Hyper-V vSwitch for all types of network traffic. If you specify a VLAN tag on a VM on the management network of a Hyper-V host, this VLAN tag must be configured on the physical switch connected to the Hyper-V host as well. The vSwitch supports both trunk and access modes. The recommended configuration is to typically have VLANs for management, live migration, or clustering, and trunk configuration for guest VM traffic to allow a small number of NICs to carry traffic for many VLANs. VLANs provide effective isolation for small or medium-sized environments. Limitations associated with VLAN tagging is the reason behind HNV as you'll see shortly. In this demo, I show you how to configure VLAN tagging on the vSwitch and guest VM. So in Hyper-V Manager, let's have a look at the Virtual Switch Manager. We have our external switch. We can configure the VLAN for the management network right here. So that's when you typically configure the management network as an access port and configure it there. Now let's have a look on how you configure VLAN settings for a VM. So in the properties of a VM, go to the network adapter and it's right there. Again, typically you would have a trunk port for the VMs and you configure every VM's VLAN properties individually. And that's it. Private VLANs. Private VLANs were common in service provider networks as a way to limit or restrict uplinks on which a VM can communicate. Hyper-V provides support to PVLANs via PowerShell only to the three types of PVLANs. Virtual machine queues and receive site scaling. Today's modern CPU hardware and operating systems support multi-core processors. Even though the hardware, the operating system, and the applications support it, the networking stack was traditionally bound to the first core of the first CPU of the system. So if you had a four-socket server with 16 cores each, 
your apps used all 64 cores of your server, but your network was stuck to CPU core zero. The network hardware had to catch up. RSS was introduced as a mechanism to split up the computational overhead associated with networking amongst all available CPU cores if needed. That's RSS for received site scaling and not RSS like the RSS feed for rich site summary. There was a problem with RSS. It was not available to virtualized environments. A smart engineer at Intel developed a way for the NIC to virtualize its queues and split them amongst multiple CPU cores. Enter VMQ. On a Hyper-V host, VMQ is configurable via PowerShell. VMQ's config isn't as easy as turn it on and get it to work. It's actually turned off by default. It's also not available for NICs slower than 10 gigabit per second NICs. First, you need to figure out how many CPU cores does your server have. You can do this with WMI through PowerShell with the get WMI object commandlet. My system here only has two CPU cores. Don't count the logical processors. This is the hyper-threading feature of the CPU. Next, determine your NIC teaming profile. If you are using the default of switch independent dynamic load balancing, then the VMQ configuration would use the sum of queues configuration. We take the number of CPU cores and this NIC teaming input. For a server with 16 CPU cores using the default NIC teaming config, that VM configuration would look like the sum of queues config as I show in this table. In this example, I split up the queues evenly between two NICs, NIC 1 and 2. I dedicate 8 CPU cores each. NIC 1 has cores 0 to 7, while NIC 2 has cores 8 to 15. Notice the max processor's PowerShell attribute specifying not the CPU core number, but the increment. If you are using another variant of teaming and load balancing, you may be using the min queues approach for which the VMQ configuration is easier and it's just one line. Hyper-V network virtualization. HNV is a key investment area for Microsoft and Hyper-V. HNV in Hyper-V is inspired by Azure and is exactly how Microsoft implements the isolation multi-tenancy in their Azure Stack product. HNV is designed to provide multi-tenancy security, and isolation while overcoming the scalability limits of VLANs and PVLANs. HNV stack in Windows Server 2019 is a complete one. It ships with isolation capabilities and protocols, as well as network functions, including the data center firewall and software load balancer. I actually cover HNV in a lot more detail in lesson number four. Are you fed up with me talking about networking yet? I hope not. There's a lot more to come. Remember to use VLANs sparingly. The recommended approach of VLANs is to provide isolation for management traffic, including clustering, live migration, and the server management. Consider VLANs for smaller guest traffic isolation only or flat networks, and use HNV for larger implementations or where multi-tenancy is required.